I got a brand new piece of equipment to add to my outdoor kitchen. Now, the Blazing Bull Infrared Cooker, what's really cool about this, it gets up to 1,500 degrees. Yes, 1,500 degrees. And what it's going to do is sear that meat, chicken, fish, quail, duck. I'm going to put it to the test. I've got a few different things, starting with uh, beef tenderloin. All right, so you grab this little unit here and slide that. I've got it turned on. The turning on part is easy. You can tell it's hot. I don't know if the marinade is a good idea or a bad idea. We're going to find out. Once that's ready to go, slide that in. Then you want to raise it up so you're closer to the heat source to get a good sear on the outside. And while that's cooking, I'm going to put some butter in here in this bottom drip tray, a little rosemary, and some garlic. And that's going to go on top of the steak when I'm done. It smells really good. But I want to give it a flip because I want it to be seared on both sides. You know, I think we're just looking at maybe another two to three minutes. I can also smell the rosemary, and I'm wondering what would happen if I put the rosemary right next to that uh, to the meat if the rosemary will smoke and add a little bit more flavor to the meat. Maybe I'll try it with some duck. I like mine a little on the rarer side, so we'll see how I did here. That one's going to be a little more cooked, I can tell, because it's smaller. What I really like, first off, is I like it to be seared on the outside. Now, you've probably heard that searing meat on the outside seals in the juices. I'm not too sure about that, but seared meat tastes infinitely better than meat that's not seared. I guarantee you that. Let's take a look inside. All right, that's a perfect medium rare. Medium rare, rarish in the center, got a little color on the outside. That's because it puts out so much heat and it sears it so quickly. Let's see what we got here. Now let me check this other little guy and see what it looks like. Still good, still medium rare. Um, it took maybe, maybe five or six minutes for this whole thing to happen. So let me plate this up, blazing bowl style. Now let me get my, my little sauce that I made down below, put that right over the top. First test of the Blazing Bull using a beef tenderloin, it's a winner. All right, next victim for my Blazing Bull infrared cooker, got a piece of salmon. Uh, this salmon actually looks a little tired. It was, um, it was one that we caught in Alaska about a year and a half ago. But I'll try and bring it back to life with some high mountain salmon rub. And I'm going to cook some peppers at the same time in my blazing bowl. So, along with the salmon and the peppers, I've got some butter in the bottom in the little drip pan. Butter, oregano, lemon. And when it's all done, that's going to go over my salmon. The peppers are definitely done. And I think the salmon is probably minutes away. Beautiful roasted peppers. You know, another thing I thought of with the Blazing Bull that would be a great application is uh, with sous vide. Because as you know, the sous vide um, doesn't blacken the meat. It doesn't sear the meat. But if you've got a tougher piece of meat, it'll make it really tender. So what would be really cool, uh, I'm going to have to try this next, is do a sous vide. Get the meat up to about 120 degrees and then slap it for a quick sear into the Blazing Bull and that'll give it a nice crust on the outside. If you happen to have a pellet grill, 
and it's not outfitted with a sear, a sear box on the outside. The better ones have a sear box where you take it from the pellet grill to the sear box and get that crust on the outside. Slap it into the blazing bull and you'll have the same results. Um, it'll get that char on the outside because one of the things that the pellet grills don't do is really sear it on the outside. So my salmon is ready. Oh, <laughs> man, that is perfect. I can tell it's, it's firmed up, and I like my salmon a little on the undercooked side. This, I'm going to see on the inside, is probably, oh yeah, it's still moist on the inside. It's, it's a little closer to medium. I like it cooked about medium rare, so maybe next time I won't leave it in quite so long. But I'm going to put some of these grilled peppers in here. Little color, a little interest, a little contrast. Now here's my lemon oregano butter. Goes right on the top. I'll even put the lemons in there too. All right, so blazing bowl, searing salmon, searing peppers. Works good. Next into my blazing bowl, I've got a pair of quail. Um, I've cut the backbone out of these quail, spatchcocked them, laid them out. I'm going to season them with a little high mountain Cajun rub. And then I'm going to go a little Asian on here. In my little drip tray down here, I have, I have butter, I have cara cara orange, I've got ginger, and I've got um, jalapeno, and I'm going to put a little ponzu in there. And this will be the sauce that goes on my quail. You don't need a separate skillet to make the sauce. It's right there. Into the blazing bowl goes my quail. If you've got something that's it's a little drippy, that's it's maybe it's got a little marinade on it, a little bit oily, I wouldn't recommend setting it up on the on the uh, blazing bowl uh, little burner plate here. Um, I like to season it here pull that out, and then getting that plate hot first seems to make a difference. So don't do what I did, but it should taste okay. One of the things that I learned about my Blazing Bull is when you're cooking something like quail, and as much as I like it to be crispy, crunchy on the outside, I decided to lower it somewhat. It has seven levels of, of uh, whatever, <laughs> levels away or farther away or closer to, to the heat source. And I noticed that it was browning rather quickly and I didn't want it to be undercooked while it was searing on the outside being a delicate piece of flesh like that. So I lowered it a little bit. Let me take a look, see what it looks like now. Let me give it a flip. What I'm amazed by is how quickly this thing cooks. And I shouldn't be amazed because 1500 degrees is really, really hot. Um, I'm going to, there's so many things I want to try here. Burgers, right? When you cook it yourself, sear it on the outside. You know, I like a steak that's Pittsburgh rare, they call it. It's black and blue. It's black on the outside and blue rare on the inside. You can do that with the blazing bowl. Let me check my quail. So again, this quail is going to be a little crispy on the outside. Um, I think the sauce is going to be really good, and uh, I think we've got about another two minutes. I know these quail, these quail are done here. I can tell by the look of them. They're nice and firm, and I like my quail to be just a little bit pink at the thigh joint when I take them off and let them rest for a few minutes. Now, even though it got a little crispy on the outside, I don't consider that a bad thing. I consider that a victory. Um, because um, with any meat, for me, I prefer it crunchy over, there we go, um, I prefer it crunchy over not crunchy. I like the skin to be crisp, and I know you probably do too. So let's check my sauce here. You know, one of the things that I've learned is that I may want to get my sauce going earlier in the drip pan because there's a cara cara orange. Um, 
because the meat cooks so quickly and sears so quickly that it um, the sauce doesn't really get as much of a chance to blend so I'm just going to put all that on there a little jalapeno some pickled ginger take my word for it the blazing bowl works well on quail Next up on my new Blazing Bull infrared cooker is duck breasts. Now, duck breasts, especially with the skin on like these, you know, these beautiful pintail from Northern California, I like the skin to be crispy. Rubbery duck skin to me is a drag. So, the Blazing Bull does what it's supposed to do. I'll have crispy duck skin. Let me season both sides here. Uh, these ducks don't look like they've been brined. I normally brine my ducks. Use a saltwater brine. The high mountain brine by far is my favorite. All right. Load this baby up. I've got four beautiful pintail breasts. The first thing I want to do is get that skin crispy. Now into my little drip pan down below, I got it started early with... I'll show you here. I've got rosemary, garlic, butter, and blue cheese. And I might add a little hot sauce to that too. But I gave it a head start because I want those flavors to meld. Um, it's, it's, when I just put it in there before, it seemed like I, butter wasn't melting fast enough because that infrared cooker was doing its job so well. So I like to get that started a little bit early back in there. That's going to be my sauce. And what's cool about it is... You can make the sauce and cook the meat all in the same place. Cook the vegetables, cook the meat, cook the fish, cook whatever it is. You got your little drip pan down below. It'll catch the juices from the meat. And then you've got all the butter and all the cool stuff that you've added to it. So one thing does it all. Okay, so let me pull this guy out. <laughs> it's doing an incredible job with the skin. What I didn't do was score that duck skin, which will keep it from curling up like that. So that's a um, rookie mistake that I shouldn't have made. But I'm going to put it about halfway because it's already getting nice and crispy on the skin side. Then I'll give it a flip. Then I'll sauce it. All right. I can smell the ducks. They are ready. I've checked them out. Lower this guy down. Crispy, yet tender and delicious. The moment of truth. Let's take a look inside here. <laughs> now see, to me this is perfect. What I really love about them is that they are crispy on the outside. That skin is nice and crispy, and for a lot of people, a lot of duck hunters don't save the skin on their ducks. It's just easier not to bother with it and just to peel them. But that crispy skin certainly does make a difference. So this is my garlic butter blue cheese. I'm going to go on top with a little rosemary in there too. <laughs> Oh my, all right, that looks good. Now a little hot sauce, as promised. A little hot sauce around the outside. This isn't super, super hot, it has a lot of flavor. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. High temperature, searing meat on the outside, keeping it still moist on the inside. You know, I'm sold. Get yourself a blazing bull.